So this is Dr. Sal from Gut Savior. Let's talk about chat GPT and doctoring. So a 15 year old girl comes to my clinic and tells me that she has a diagnosis of gastroparesis. I wanted to hear more about it. And she tells me that she ran her symptoms by chat GPT and she came up with this diagnosis. After going through the whole history and exam and talking about it for a while, I had a strong suspicion that she was on the right track. So we did a gastric emptying study for her and lo and behold, she had a diagnosis of gastroparesis, which is where your stomach is lazy in very layman terms. And then it doesn't empty out completely after eating. So you have more retention of food in your stomach even few hours after you have eaten. That's gastroparesis. So the question comes now, at what stage are we in, in terms of the AI revolution that we are part of, and how much can we rely on the chat GPT? Should doctors be letting or allowing or permitting, or if we can't do anything about it, should doctors be okay? Or even encouraging people to go to chat GPT and check out their symptoms and see if they have a diagnosis. Sooner or later, the diagnostic capability of AI and chat GPT will increase with time and it will be able to put together symptom complexes and come up with diagnostic possibilities. But where we are right now, I think we still have to double check everything and verify everything that chat GPT tells us to do when it comes to doctoring, when it comes to medical diagnosis. So what is AI? And what's ChatGPT doing and how much can you rely on it? In terms of looking at specific gastrointestinal diseases, gastrointestinal issues, symptoms, I would go to verifiable, trusted, validated, and resources which have been out there for a while, which are frequently updated. And in terms of children's gastrointestinal problems, I would check with NASPGAN, N-A-S-P-G-H-A-N.org, G-I-Kids.org. NASPGAN is, stands for North American Society of Pediatric Gastroenterology, Hepatology, and Nutrition. And it takes care of all kinds of liver and gastrointestinal and nutrition problems of children. And its resources are verifiable, they are data-based, they are evidence-based, and you can rely on the information that you get. In terms of adult gastroenterology, we have AGA, American Gastroenterology Association. You have American College of Gastroenterology, and you have, in terms of inflammatory bowel diseases, we have Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. Those are very trusted and reliable sources that we should verify information from. So yes, it's okay to run things by ChatGPT. As far as I am concerned, I personally am okay with people going in there and chatting, and that's what ChatGPT is about. But then when you come to the doctor, you have already explored and you are already well informed and ready to discuss more. So I think knowledgeable patients, I love them. I love patients when they are informed, when they have done some data work, when they have done some research on their own conditions, and now they're ready to discuss more. That will take us to the next level of information and next level of uh, talk altogether. So that's a very good use of time. But I would verify everything. Most recently, if you look at what has been happening is as we learn more about AI, it is rare extremely rare for any AI or chat GPT to tell you, I don't know. You will notice that because it'll say, I'm analyzing, I'm looking up, I'm analyzing. So what it does is actually whatever information is out there in the big data bank, chat GPT tries to locate. And if it cannot identify the exact source, it tries to replicate, it tries to fabricate sometimes, not overtly lying but fabricate the data. So which means that in some cases we have seen that it quotes literature where there is no literature, there is no publication, but it comes up with a publication. So this has been a disaster for those who rely completely on ChatGPT to synthesize technical data or to synthesize all this medical information into small bite-sized information. You know, it is not always reliable. And yes, it has known to fabricate 
create papers, literature, and quote it as a resource of information, and which is totally wrong because you will not be able to find that always. So if it quotes a data, I would personally go and look up through Medline searches, through PubMed, and then see if there is actual publication. And if it is, good. But if it's not, then you know that AI or the chat GPT fabricated it because it wants to come up with answers for you. It is trying to please you. And this is what its whole goal is, is trying to be your assistant. So there may be good intention behind this uh, deception. So these are my thoughts on at what stage we are at right now. Now, we also want to understand that there is machine learning and there is deep learning. When it comes to algorithms, if you feed the data right to chat GPT or to AI algorithms, they may come up with ways to improve outcomes in patient treatment, outcomes of surgery, outcomes of deep learning has been found to be very, very helpful in detecting early cancers in all the x-rays and imaging studies. When it comes to image analysis, chat GPT and the AI could have more powerful perception in early detection and can help you in when it comes to deep learning. So right now we are we still cannot do without it. It is necessary. I wouldn't call it evil because I look at AI as our future where we will be very closely working with AI at every level. But again, it is a tool to be used wisely and to interpret it and to verify it. We'll have to continue to do that. There was data about appendicitis. Frequently, as you know, kids present with symptoms and signs that suggest of appendicitis or appendix inflammation and the surgeon goes in and takes the appendix out. Previously, it was up to 10% or more appendix that were removed were normal. So in spite of CT scans, in spite of perfect examination and symptoms and signs and demonstration, there are still 10% of the time normal appendix have been taken out, presumably for appendicitis but when the pathologist looks at the appendix taken out, that appendix does not have signs of inflammation or appendix appendicitis. So with the help of AI now, by creating logarithms, good algorithmic and good data input that goes in, the AI suggests that if we do these, these, these cases, they're more likely to have appendicitis. So we can save a lot of kids from getting their normal appendix out. So in a small data, in about 500 cases or so, it has shown that AI reduced the number of normal appendix being taken out from 10 to 15% all the way down to less than 1%. Now that is a remarkable feat. So we cannot say that AI is not helpful to us. We cannot say that chat GPT or AI is not an, in our future. It will be in our future. Question is how we as a human, how we as doctors, how we as medical professionals, how we as patients are going to evolve with this very necessary tool of the future. Thank you for joining me. This is Dr. Sal from Get Savior.